Othello. Brabantio was a rich man in Venice who worked for the government. He had a beautiful, gentle daughter named Desdemona. Many men wanted to marry Desdemona, but she said no to all of them. Desdemona was not like other women. She was looking for a truly special man. She believed that the powers of the mind were more important than looks or status. Still, people were shocked when Desdemona chose a man named Othello to be her lover. Othello was a black man from a race of people called Moors. Moors came from North Africa. At this time in Europe, white and black people did not marry. It was not done. Still, Othello was a very good choice, even though he was black. He was a brave soldier in the Venetian army. At this time, Venice was at war with Turkey. Othello had fought the Turks bravely and won many honors. He was respected and liked by all who knew him, especially Desdemona's father. Othello was a great traveler. Desdemona, like many ladies, loved to listen to adventure stories. She loved to listen to Othello's stories, and he enjoyed talking to such an intelligent young lady. Othello told Desdemona about the dangerous adventures he'd had at sea. He told her about when the Turkish enemy captured him and how he escaped. Desdemona especially liked to hear Othello's stories of far off countries. He told her of green jungles and tall mountains and deep caves which never ended. There were cannibals, people who ate men. There were also the people with heads below their shoulders. Desdemona enjoyed all this greatly. One day, when Othello's stories were done, Desdemona said, My lord, it is all so strange. I wish that heaven would give me a man like you. Her pretty face turned pink with embarrassment. If you know anyone who loves me, sir, all that man would need to do would be to tell me stories like yours, and I would give him my heart. What Desdemona meant was that she loved Othello and wanted him to love her too. Women could not speak words of love openly in those days. But Othello understood her meaning. He was very happy, as he also loved Desdemona. He told her so and asked her to marry him. She said yes. Unfortunately, it would be difficult for Othello and Desdemona to marry. Brabantio would not like his only daughter to marry a black man, even if Othello was Venice's greatest soldier. So Othello and Desdemona were married in secret. Of course, when Brabantio heard of it, he was extremely surprised and angry. Brabantio called a great meeting of government people together to discuss this shocking marriage. Othello and Desdemona were also there. At first, Brabantio shouted at Othello, You are a Moor. You have used magic to make my daughter love you. How else would the fair Desdemona agree to marry a black man against all customs? But Othello remained calm. He told Brabantio and the other men how he and Desdemona had fallen in love. He told them about Desdemona's love of a good story. Soon, the men realized that Othello was being clear and honest. He had won Desdemona's love naturally. Stories like yours would have impressed my daughter, too, said the Duke of Venice to Othello. Then Desdemona came forward and spoke to everyone. I have a duty to my father, but even more important, I have a duty to my lord and husband, she said. Father, didn't my dear mother act the same way? She chose you over her own father. Brabantio then regretted his harsh words. Othello, my daughter is yours, he said. If I could have stopped her from marrying you, I would have. But what is done can't be undone. I am very glad I have no other daughter, or else Desdemona's actions make me want to lock her up in her room forever. 
At this time, the city of Venice needed Othello's help. The Turkish enemy had attacked the island of Cyprus. At this time, Cyprus belonged to Venice. Everyone agreed that only Othello could defend the island from the enemy. After the problem of his marriage was solved, Othello agreed to go to Cyprus. He would lead an army against the Turks. Desdemona was a little afraid of the danger, but she wanted to go with him. On the day they arrived in Cyprus, some happy news came. The Turkish ships had been caught in a storm, so the island was safe for a short time. But the war that Othello had to suffer had only begun. Another enemy was nearby, and this enemy was more deadly and terrible than a thousand Turkish soldiers. Othello had many friends in the Venetian army. His best friend was a man named Michael Cassio. This Cassio was a young man from Florence. He was very charming, cheerful, and handsome, and women loved him. He was also wealthy and intelligent. All these qualities might have made Othello a little jealous of Cassio. Othello was older, and he had just married a young and beautiful wife. But Othello's soul was noble; he could not be jealous of Cassio. When Othello first met Desdemona, he asked Cassio's advice about her. Good Cassio, I have been a soldier all my life. I do not know the art of conversation. What will please a beautiful lady? What should I say to her? Cassio had advised Othello to talk to Desdemona of his life. Cassio also helped Othello to win Desdemona by praising Othello when he wasn't there. Of course, this plan was successful. So both Othello and Desdemona liked and trusted Cassio very much. Now that they were married, they still were friendly with Cassio. Othello was a serious man, and he liked Cassio's cheerful nature. Desdemona also enjoyed Cassio; he made her laugh. But of course, she loved no one more than Othello. Othello had recently given Cassio a high position in the Venetian army. This action angered another soldier, a man named Iago. Iago was older than Cassio. And he thought he ought to get the position. Iago hated the handsome Cassio, and he hated Othello for liking Cassio. He was jealous of both of these men. Recently, Iago had decided that Othello was too interested in his wife Emilia. This was not true, of course. Othello loved Desdemona only, but Iago was a very suspicious person. His dark, evil mind. Thought up a way to get revenge on them all. His plan would involve Othello, Desdemona, and Cassio. Iago was evil, but he was extremely wise. He had studied human nature for many years. He knew that the most painful feeling in the world for a man is the feeling of jealousy, the feeling that the woman you love loves and wants another man. The fires of hell are less than this pain. If I can make the Moor jealous of Cassio, if I can make him think Desdemona loves Cassio, who knows what will happen? Perhaps the murder of Cassio or Othello or both. I don't care. Iago said to himself one day. Now, the news that the Turkish army was caught in a storm made everyone quite happy. Everyone felt like it was a holiday. All the soldiers and their ladies drank and danced. Everyone celebrated the recent wedding of their noble general Othello to the lovely Desdemona. That first night on the island, Cassio was on duty. Othello told him to make sure the other soldiers didn't drink too much. Make sure they don't get drunk and fight. We don't want to upset the good people of this island. Said Othello, Cassio promised to obey the orders, but Iago came over to talk to Cassio. He had some bottles of wine with him. He persuaded Cassio to drink a lot. Soon, Cassio was very drunk. Let me drink to the lady Desdemona. He cried, "She is a most beautiful lady." 
He said these words many times and drank many glasses of wine. Soon, a gold gentleman named Roderigo passed by. Iago had earlier spoken with this man. I'll pay you money to start a fight with Cassio tonight, he said. The man agreed. So he insulted Cassio, and being drunk, Cassio jumped up and took out his sword. These two fought, and Montano, governor of Cyprus, who interfered to appease the dispute, was wounded. Meanwhile, Iago ran to tell everyone that soldiers were fighting. Ring the alarm! he cried loudly. He wanted Othello to hear what was happening. Othello did hear and jumped out of bed. He went to the scene of the fight. He asked Cassio what had happened. Cassio was not so drunk now. He was terribly sorry to have disobeyed Othello's orders. Cassio was too much ashamed to reply. So Iago spoke. Iago pretended to be very sorry for Cassio. I don't want to make trouble for him, but he was very drunk, said Iago. Of course, Iago didn't tell Othello that he had made Cassio drunk. And Cassio didn't remember. While Iago spoke, he seemed to make Cassio's actions seem very serious. Othello was forced to take Cassio's new position away from him. The next morning, when Cassio woke up, he felt awful. He went to talk to Iago about the problem. I feel terrible, Iago. I was a fool last night. There is no hope that Othello will give me the position back. I must tell him I am a drunk. What can I do, Iago? Iago was very pleased. Everything was working perfectly. Good Cassio, do not speak to Othello about this problem. If you want your position back, you must speak to the lovely Desdemona, his wife. She can do anything with Othello. He loves her so. Desdemona likes you, she is honest and good. She will agree to persuade Othello to give you the position back. Cassio followed this evil advice. He spoke to Desdemona, who kindly agreed to speak to her husband. Good Cassio, I will not stop until you have your position returned to you, she said. Look, here comes Othello and Iago. Leave me now. I will go and speak to Othello. Desdemona kept her promise. For the next few hours, she talked about Cassio. She praised him constantly. Othello could not send her away. Will you forgive him tonight? Desdemona asked. Not tonight, Desdemona. It is too soon for that. I am very angry with him, Othello said. Then what about tomorrow, dear lord? Desdemona said. Look how unhappy Cassio is. I do not think his crime was so terrible. Any man can become drunk by accident. Othello still was not sure. Dear Othello, I am surprised at you, said Desdemona seriously. Cassio has done so much for you and for us. He helped you to win my love. If I am angry with you, he praises you constantly. I ask you to do this small thing for me. Be friends with Cassio once again. Othello could not say no to his wife. He promised Desdemona to give Cassio his old position back. It had happened that, when Cassio had spoken to Desdemona, Othello and Iago entered the same room. Immediately, Cassio left the room. Iago looked serious. I don't like that, he said to Othello. Othello didn't pay attention to Iago's comment. But after his long conversation with Desdemona, he remembered Iago's words. When Desdemona had gone, Iago came walking by. Oh, good afternoon, General Othello. You know, I was curious about something. When you were courting Desdemona, did Cassio know of your love for her? Of course he did, said Othello. Cassio carried messages from me to Desdemona. He spoke highly of me to Desdemona. He helped me a lot. Iago looked very upset. 
Is that right? Are you serious? He cried. Othello remembered Iago's earlier comment about Desdemona and Cassio. I don't like that, he had said. Suddenly, Desdemona and Cassio happened to pass them. They were talking in whispers. Othello began to feel worried. Was there some meaning in all this? Unfortunately, he trusted Iago as a friend. Now Iago seemed to be keeping some terrible secret from him. Iago, I want you to tell me what you are thinking, said Othello firmly. There is something bothering you about my wife and Cassio. What is it? Well, what if some terrible idea is in my mind? said the sly Iago. It doesn't matter. I am a very ridiculous person, Othello. I would feel terrible if my stupid ideas caused you any trouble. People's good names shouldn't be destroyed because of my little thoughts. Iago went on speaking in this evil way. Othello became more and more curious. Finally, Iago said, No, good Othello, do not be worried. You must beware of jealousy. It is a terrible thing. Othello didn't know what to think. Iago seemed to be telling him that he had a reason to be jealous. He began to feel suspicious. Iago, I know that my wife is beautiful. She sings and dances well and enjoys company. She speaks her thoughts. But most important, she is loyal to me. I must have proof before I accuse her, he said. Oh, dear general, I certainly have no proof, cried Iago. I am sure your lady is honest. I only beg you, watch her carefully when Cassio is near. If she praises him too much, well, do not be jealous, but do not be too sure. For I, Iago, understand Italian women more than you. In Venice, wives let heaven and God see many things that they would not show their husbands. You know, Desdemona did lie to her father when she married you. She kept it a secret from him. I will only say, women can have many secrets. Othello thought, she lied to her father. Would she also lie to me? He looked so upset that Iago then apologized to him. Othello pretended not to care, but in his mind he was afraid. Iago, I beg you to continue speaking. What else do you know? Well, I don't want to accuse my good friend Cassio, said Iago sadly. Inside, he was laughing. I don't really know anything. Iago then said, My lord Othello, let me say this. I am your friend. I want you to be happy. Desdemona refused many men from her own class and race. She chose you instead. This is very amazing. She is a rich lady of Venice. Perhaps Desdemona has a strange nature. Perhaps one day she may wake up and decide, What was I thinking? She may compare you to the fine young Italian men around her. Men with handsome white faces. Men like herself. What will you do then? Iago advised Othello not to speak to Cassio immediately. Just listen to her and watch her. If she praises Cassio too much, well, maybe she loves him. Iago had a great deal of cunning. He would use Desdemona's goodness and her friendship with Cassio to destroy her, and through her, Cassio and Othello. From that moment on, Othello could not rest. He promised Iago to be patient, but his thoughts were like a storm. He could never be sure of Desdemona's love again. What if Iago was telling the truth? What if Desdemona and Cassio were having an affair? Perhaps they were laughing at him because he was a black moor. Othello couldn't concentrate in the next days. He did not feel like a man. Sometimes he thought Desdemona was honest, and sometimes not. Sometimes he believed Iago, sometimes he didn't. He was a man in torture. He wanted to die. He wished Iago had never said anything. 
One day, Iago said, My lord, does Desdemona have a little handkerchief? It is red and white. Yes, said Othello. It was my first gift to her. Iago looked sad. Well, I just saw it in Cassio's hand. He rubbed his face with it. Othello was furious. If this is true, Iago, I will not rest until revenge is done. I will kill Cassio within three days. And as for that beautiful liar, she must die too. To a jealous man, small things may seem like serious proof. Othello never once asked how Cassio might have gotten Desdemona's handkerchief. The truth was that Desdemona had never given it to Cassio. She would never give presents to another man. Both Cassio and Desdemona were totally innocent. But Iago, how evil he was. Iago had made his wife, Emilia, steal this handkerchief from Desdemona. Emilia was a good but weak woman. She found it by fortune and gave it to Iago. Then Iago put this napkin in Cassio's lodging. Othello went to Desdemona. My head aches, he said. Would you give me your handkerchief? I want to rub my head with it. I am sorry, my dear lord. I think I have lost that handkerchief, said Desdemona sadly. How? said Othello angrily. That handkerchief was magical. It came from a witch in Egypt. When my mother gave it to me, she said, This handkerchief will make your wife love you while she keeps it. But if she loses it, you will love her no more. I have had your father's love because of it. Make sure your wife keeps it forever. Is this true? cried Desdemona. She was very frightened. She didn't want to lose Othello's love. Yes, said Othello. Of course, none of it was true. He wanted to see how his wife would react. Desdemona was upset and afraid. But she tried to be cheerful. She promised to find the handkerchief. Then she asked Othello, What about good Michael Cassio? Have you become friends with him again? He is a wonderful man, you know. This was just what Iago had foretold. Othello was furious. He had to leave the room. He was so angry. It was true. Desdemona was not honest. Meanwhile, Desdemona was very worried. Could it be that my lord is jealous? she said to herself. I do not want to believe it. He is too honorable. But why is he acting so strangely? It must be true. No, I cannot accuse him. What is wrong with me? Perhaps some bad news from Venice troubles him and makes him angry with me. Men are not perfect. They cannot always be sweet and kind to their wives. She scolded herself for thinking that Othello was jealous. When this couple met later, Othello said what he thought. You love another man, he said coldly. You have been unfaithful to me. And this poor man could not stand the pain and cried. Dear Othello, why are you crying? cried Desdemona. I can stand anything but your infidelity, pain and war and sickness, but not this. It has broken my heart. You look so beautiful now. I wish you had never been born, cried Othello and left her. The gentle and innocent Desdemona also wept many tears. She did not understand why Othello was suspicious of her. How could it have happened? She loved Othello so much. It killed her to see him in pain. Desdemona was so upset that she felt ill. She went to her bed and fell asleep. Desdemona woke up later that night. Othello was kissing her. At first she was happy. But then she looked at Othello's face. He looked like a crazy man. Prepare to die, he said. Desdemona cried. Oh, my husband, I beg you, tell me what I have done wrong. I love you so much. Silence! It is you and Cassio. You gave him that handkerchief. You are in love with him. 
You dishonor me. Desdemona tried to defend herself, but Othello would not listen. He placed many sheets and blankets over Desdemona's body, and as she cried, he choked her to death. Only two minutes after this horrible event, Cassio was brought into the room. He was wounded and bleeding. Iago had paid Roderigo to murder him, but Roderigo had failed to do so. Iago had then killed Roderigo to prevent his plan being discovered. And at the same time, Iago wounded Cassio from behind. Unfortunately for Iago, some letters were found in Roderigo's pocket and given to Cassio. Iago had written these letters, explaining his evil plan from the beginning. They showed Iago's guilt and the innocence of Desdemona and Cassio. My good General Othello, what have I done to you? Why has Iago tried to murder me? Cassio cried. When Othello read these letters, he realized what Iago had done. But now Othello was a murderer. He had killed his dear lady, who had always loved him. The incredible pain of this discovery was too much. My darling, I have wronged you. I will pay the price with my own life, said Othello. And killed himself. His body fell next to his dead ladies. The people of Cyprus were amazed at all these terrible things. They had thought very highly of Othello. He was a brave soldier and a good husband, they said. But an evil man destroyed him. He did not love wisely, he loved too much. When he learned his mistake, he did the honorable thing and died. Now that Othello was dead, all his brave and good deeds were remembered. The evil Iago was tortured and killed for his crimes, and Cassio got the power and command in Cyprus.